What's going on guys? My name's Emmanuel and welcome to my channel. The end of yet another crazy week in the stock market. The US and the UK market seemed quite choppy for me this week, but at the end of the day, they both finished in the green and hopefully you guys also had a green week. Most of you guys know that two weeks ago, I sold all of my shares in Square, bagging a profit of over 50%. And I reinvested all those proceeds into Apple due to their MobiWave acquisition, which I think will give Square a run for its money. Now, this past week, Apple announced a new expansion project, which I am extremely excited and also I'm extremely passionate about because it's in the health and fitness sector, guys. A huge multi-billion dollar industry and I think it could be a game changer for Apple if they can actually get this right. So we'll be discussing that expansion move today and also I want us to take a look at Tim Cook's ambition for Apple within the healthcare space. Also this week guys Epic Games the creators of Fortnite launched what appeared to be a premeditated attack to Apple. And in my opinion, I think they tried to do the dirty on Apple and I think they could have approached it in a much more professional manner. But hey guys, we will look through the nitty gritty of what occurred and you can make up your own conclusions. And also guys, put your conclusions in the description below. Let's talk about it. Finally guys, I did make some purchases this week. I added to one of my existing holdings and I also made a brand new acquisition, which I'm excited to share with you in today's video. So we've got a lot to get through today, guys. But before we dive into today's video, please don't forget to smash that like button, guys, for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps my channel grow. And also, if you're new, I want to say welcome and I hope you gain a ton of value from today's content. We do this every single week, guys. And if you do, hit that subscribe button for more up-to-date content from myself. With that said guys, let's hop into today's video. Okay guys, so we're gonna dive straight into the plans that Apple has to dominate the health and fitness sector. Okay guys, so I was listening to an interview from Tim Cook, who is the CEO for Apple. And in that interview, he clearly states his healthcare vision for Apple and also what he wants Apple to be known for in the future. Let me play that interview for you right now. If you zoom out into the future and you look back and you ask the question, what was Apple's greatest contribution to mankind? It will be about health. Because our business has always been about enriching people's lives. And as we've gotten into healthcare more and more, uh, through the watch and through other things that we've created with research kit and care kit uh, and putting your medical records on the iPhone. This is a huge uh, deal and it's something that is very important for people. We are democratizing. We are taking what has been with the, the institutions and empowering the individual to, to manage their health. And we're just at the front end of this. But I do think Looking back in the future, you will you will answer that question. Apple's most important contribution to mankind has been in health. So there you have it, guys. I thought that was a really interesting interview. And if you haven't seen it yet and you are an Apple shareholder, I strongly, strongly recommend you check out that interview that he had with Jim Cramer just over a year ago. OK, guys, so here are the key points from that interview. Tim Cook has said his vision for Apple's greatest contribution to mankind will be in health. Now that's an incredible statement to make considering Apple's innovation in the, the phone space, in the laptop space, the you know, all of the hardware accomplishments. Remember the iPod as well, guys. But he wants to redirect that focus into the healthcare space. And of course, they've already got the Apple Watch, which is already starting to be integrated with people's health records. And I think, you know, with Apple's current ecosystem, they're going to be able to link everything together. I just find that extremely exciting as an Apple shareholder. Another key point I got from that interview, guys, is that he wants Apple to be known for enriching people's lives through the Apple Watch. So it seems like Apple's futuristic focus will be heavily weighted on the Apple Watch of course, because it is integrated with your iPhone, but it's your watch that collects 
majority of your fitness data, your healthcare data. And I think this is really, really game changing, guys. Another key point that I took away from that interview was that he wants Apple to be able to empower individuals to access and manage their own health. OK, so I think this is really, really exciting stuff. It can be extremely game changing if Tim Cook and Apple can get this right. And I think they are on the right path, especially with the major announcement that they made this week. So the major announcement that came out this week was that Apple plans an exercise video subscription service, which will rival the likes of Peloton and Nike. And if you've been paying attention this year, guys, Peloton has taken a huge market share for the fitness industry, okay? So Apple has seen this, and now they're going to create a subscription service that could rival Peloton. I'm gonna take you to that article right now. So as you can see here, guys, the news broke on August 13th, this Thursday, and it says, you know, as a result of Apple's announcement, Peloton's shares slip pre-market, on news Apple was planning exercise video subscription service, okay? The key points from the article, guys, is that Apple plans to offer virtual workouts via an app for the iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, Bloomberg reported. And like I said, guys, it's a direct threat to both Peloton and Nike, which offers virtual training app called Nike Training Club. So my first reaction to reading this report was brilliant. We're taking on Peloton. But as I read deeper into this article and did some further research, I don't really think right now that Apple releasing a exercise video subscription service, I don't see how that's going to affect Peloton in the short term. So Peloton have actually managed to find a way to integrate their hardware with their software. You know, they're not just a software based company that provide online training. They've provided the users the, the cycle, the bicycle, which is integrated with their software. And as you can see from this video, guys, the subscription service enables users to integrate their, their cycling experience with online training. And I don't see Apple providing any hardware at the moment. With this recent announcement, it's purely software based. Now, if Apple come out and announce that they're going to release like an exercise bike as well, and maybe a treadmill, then I can say it's going to compete with Peloton. I take a huge proportion of Peloton's market share, but as of right now, guys, I don't really see this as a direct competitor for Peloton. Nike, maybe, but Peloton, no. So another major news headlines for Apple this week was that they banned Fortnite from their platform, okay? So Fortnite is no longer available on the app stores and also Google followed suit. As you can see here, Fortnite has been banned from both the Apple and Google app stores. So why did that happen? And this is why I think it was premeditated because as you can see, the ban was basically calculated by Epic Games as a protest over the percentage of fees that Apple and to a lesser extent Google take on transactions in its mobile ecosystem where users buy in-game items or currency. The article goes on to say that on August 13, Epic, which they own Fortnite, implemented its own in-app payment system that bypassed Apple's standard fee. Apple typically takes a cut of between 15 to 30 percent on payments made inside its app. Now let me show you what this looked like guys. So this is how Epic Games tried to go around it guys. So in the app itself, in the game, it provided its users two options to either pay the regular price which is from the Apple App Store which is $9.99 or you could pay Epic Games Direct at a discounted price of $7.99 and with that payment you'll be able to get 1000 V-Bucks which is pretty much the Fortnite currency so this is completely against the terms and conditions of the App Store and they deliberately did this and this is why I said it was premeditated guys because literally after they made that option available to its users, Epic responded with a lawsuit. It says here, in two clearly calculated ways, the first was to launch an antitrust lawsuit against Apple and Google. So immediately, they, they had the lawsuits ready, guys. So as soon as Apple took action to ban Fortnite, boom, they dropped a lawsuit on Apple. As well as a lawsuit, guys, they actually went a step further and created a video campaign with reference to Apple's 1984 Super Bowl commercial. Let me play that for you right now.
Look at this, guys. Epic Game has defied the App Store monopoly. In retaliation, Apple is blocking Fortnite from a billion devices. Join the fight to stop the 2020 becoming 1984. <sighs> Man, this just makes me sigh. Like, what are you doing, Epic Games? Are you really trying to take on Apple? <laughs> I think in the long term, guys, this is going to really affect Epic Games. And also, I don't think it's fair for Fortnite users. The rules are simple, okay? If your platform is being used on the App Store, you have to pay through App Store payments. It's that simple. Like, it's that simple. It's not just Epic Games, by the way. Any other app developer, they all have to abide by the same rules. So why are you deciding to break the rules? I don't know, guys. Share your thoughts below. But I think this is going to be severely detrimental to Epic Games. And also, it's going to affect a lot of Fortnite users who I don't think this is fair, in my opinion. Okay, okay, guys. So moving on to my acquisitions this week, I purchased 20 shares of Simon's Property Group. My cost price per share was $70.54 which is a total cost of $1,411, okay? So my annual dividend income from this acquisition will be $104, and my yield on cost is 7.37%. That's my current yield. Now, it's currently got a dividend safety score of 25, guys, and if you've watched my dividend investing for beginners, you will know that a dividend yield of 7% is considered high risk, and that's why it's Simon Property Group has a safety score of 25. But this was the main reason why I bought shares in Simon's Property Group because they're currently in discussions with Amazon. So Amazon's discussion with Simon are focused on turning small ailing department store spaces into last mile fulfillment center reported by the Wall Street Journal. So I think this is huge, guys. If you know anything about Simon Property Group, they're into the shopping mall space. And because that sector has been hit really hard by the lockdowns, I see this as Simon Property Group innovating and they're in talks to turn some of its store spaces into Amazon fulfillment centers, which I think can be a game changer for Simon Property Group going forward, okay? And my final purchase, guys, was JP Morgan. I ended up buying five shares of JP Morgan, which brings my total shares now to 15 shares in this bank. My cost price per share was around $96 and some change. My total cost now is $1,453. My current yield on cost is 3.72% and that's going to provide me with an annual income of $54, okay guys? And my current position in that is up by 5.7%, which currently means I'm up by $83, okay? And those are the moves I made this week, guys, all right? So I hope you have a profitable week this week, guys. Remember, all my links and my socials are in the description below. Follow me on Instagram, guys. Reach out. Let's connect. Let's talk all things stocks. Have a great week, guys. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's weekly roundup. And again, leave your comments in the section below regarding your thoughts with Epic Game and Fortnite and also Apple's fitness ambitions. Ultimately, guys, make sure you do your own due diligence and your own analysis before you decide to invest in any stock. Remember, I am not a financial advisor. I just love researching, investing and buying stocks. All the links to help you with your investing are in the description below, including some books that I highly recommend. Plus, my broker Trading212 will send us both a free share if you sign up using the link in the description below. With all that said, guys, don't forget to smash the like button if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you want more content from me. Thank you for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.